this is an opportunity for practices who are feeling a little bit wobbly maybe, feeling a bit vulnerable, or just feeling that they'd like an outside pair of eyes come in, look at them, look at the way they uh, manage the practice, the way they run the practice, and everything about it really. The resilience funding, of course, has come in very, very handy for a lot of practices so that they get an action plan if they've got no funding to help them either backfill the GPs or the practice manager so they can go off and learn how to do something differently. And the 10-point action plan makes a big difference. We would be allocated the practice by NHS England. We then set up a date for me to visit them. And that would typically be with the practice manager, um, at least one GP, if not more GPs, and anybody else that they would like to be involved in that meeting. We offer them the uh, 360 degree colleague um, survey. And the other thing that they're offered is an audit of their skill mix. And we pull together a diagnostic pack and different um, metrics which enables us to explore things that perhaps they haven't realised or that they haven't thought about before. Um, so I challenge in the nicest possible way and, and start them thinking about okay what kind of things could they do differently. What we do is to look at the, the 10 high impact actions and the menu of support that's in the GP resilience document. Um, and we badge the actions against those um, headings. We're not coming in and telling them what to do. We're coming in with the experience that we have, tailoring it to each individual practice. So each of the action plans is different. And what have we learned together through that diagnostic process is going to help you the most. A couple of years ago, we got put into special measures following a CQC inspection. And in discussion with NHS England and our CCG, one of the offers was to uh, put us through the uh, NHS Resilience Programme. We recognised that by using the, the CSU to provide us with levels of information which we didn't have that compared us with our performance with other surgeries, and being able to use those comparisons are really helpful in terms of driving your focus. Subsequently, we have actually started recruiting a different mix of staff. What's important to, to, to deliver on the day care for patients is that there is a variety of clinicians that you have available so that not everything is focused at the GP, which then means that uh, patients can actually get to see people quicker. Um, and having a, this now, having this mix of clinical pharmacists and nurse practitioners and paramedics means that we can respond more appropriately to the demand that we're getting from our patients. So having said to the CCG that our intention was to merge, uh, they then uh, said, well, if you're going to merge, there is some funding available and we were able to put a plan together that suited our needs. We had uh, a facilitator who was very adaptable and looked at what we needed. And so from a very negative initial concern to the reality of it, which was actually a very positive experience with, um, uh, you know, with somebody who uh, brought, as I say, that, that sort of external dynamic to the, to the whole operation and probably pulled it together in a way that would have taken us maybe twice as long if we'd ever get there. There's a lot out there, a lot of support, as long as practices are willing to sort of open up and say, come on then, help me.